Currently in our Express application, we are only handling the unhandled routes by using this global error handling middleware. So here inside this route, which is defined for handling all the unhandled routes, there we are creating an instance of this custom error class and then we are passing that error to this global error handling middleware. And in there, these unhandled route errors will be cached and it will be handled. But we can also use this global error handling middleware in our async methods. So if I go to this moviescontroller.js, there we are defining some route handler functions. For example, this get all movies, then we have this get movie, we have this create movie, and so on. So you will notice that all these route handler functions, these are async functions. And in there, we are using try catch block. So if there is any error, that will be handled by this catch block. And inside the catch block, we are writing the logic to handle the error. Basically, here we are sending the status code for the error which has happened. So for example, here we are sending 400, that means bad request. And then we are sending some JSON data in the response with the status as fail and the message as error message. Now, instead of doing it like this, here also we can use our global error handling middleware. For example, just like how we are doing it here, we can do it in the same way in this method as well inside this catch block. So here I can replace this code with this one. Let me call this variable as error because we are already receiving this error parameter here and we want to pass this error to the global error handling middleware. And for the error message here we can say error.message. Okay, here for this catch block we are receiving the error object which has occurred and on that we will have the message property. So basically to this new error object which we are creating using our custom error class there also we want to set the error message as the actual error message which has happened and then we were sending the status code as 400 so here also we can specify that and then we are sending this error object to the global error handling middleware and there it will be handled so this is also how we can do it but what i also want here is i want to remove this try and catch block from within this function because as you can see this try and catch block it is making the code a bit messy and unfocused also the goal of this create movie function is to create a movie object it should not be responsible for catching the errors and then passing it to the global error handling middleware it should only focus on creating a movie object it should have a single responsibility and because of this try catch block we also have some duplicate codes so you will notice that all these catch blocks are almost same right even if i replace these codes with these two lines of code which we have just copied then also it will be duplicate code in all the functions and we don't want to duplicate the code so what i want is i want to take this try catch block from here and i want to put it on a higher level in another function so basically what we are going to do here is we are going to create a function and then wrap this async function inside that function let's actually see that in action so let me go ahead and let me create that function here and i'm going to call this function async error handler and to this function we need to pass another function as its argument so here i'm going to call this parameter as func and this func will receive a function as its value and then from within this function we are going to call that function and from here we need to pass the request the response and the next function so the goal of this function is to catch the errors that has occurred in the async functions for example let's say we are going to pass this create movie to this function as its argument so this create movie function it will be assigned to this func parameter let me actually go ahead and let's do that so I'll copy it from here and I will pass that function here. Okay, so what we are doing here is we are passing this function as an argument to async error handler function. So this function here, it will be assigned to this func parameter. And then inside this async error handler, we are calling that function. Now, the function which we are passing here, as you can see, it is an async function, right? And we know that an async function, a function that runs asynchronously, it is going to return a promise. 
And when there is an error inside of an async function, that simply means that the promise has been rejected. And we can handle that rejected promise by calling the catch method on it. So here, this function, when it is called, it is going to return a promise. That promise will be either resolved or rejected. If some error has occurred inside this function, in that case, it is going to return a rejected promise. And that rejected promise can be handled by using catch method okay and this catch method is going to receive the error object the error which has occurred and what we can do is we can simply pass that error object to the global error handling middleware now how are we going to call this global error handling middleware by calling the next function and to that by passing the error object right and this should be it now we can remove this try catch block from our async functions all right so what we are doing here is we are passing this async function as an argument to this async error handler so this function will be assigned to this func parameter and inside this function we are calling that function so basically we are calling this function so when we are calling this function here it is going to return a promise that promise will be either resolved or rejected when a promise is rejected that means some error has occurred and we are handling that error using this catch method. That means when this function will be called, if some error occurs inside this function, that will be handled by this catch method. And inside this catch method, what we are doing, we are calling the global error handling middleware by passing this error object to this next function. Now, here we have two problems. The first problem is this async error handler function, it has no way of knowing the request, response, and next function and the second problem is this create movie it should be a function so earlier we were assigning an async function to it but now what we are doing is we are passing this async function to this async error handler function so this function will be assigned here to this func parameter and then inside this function we are calling that function so basically we are calling this function and we know that when we call a function, we are going to get some result. That means to this create movie, we are assigning the result of executing this function. Here, we are not assigning any function to this create movie. We are assigning the result of the execution of this function. Okay, so this create movie right now, it is not a function. And because of that, this implementation is not completely okay. Because the function which we are passing here, it should not be called immediately, right? This function which we are passing in order to create a movie object, it should not be called immediately. It should be called only by the express whenever a new post request is made to create a movie object, right? Whenever we receive a request for creating a new movie object, then only this function should be executed. But right now, that's not the case. Right now, this function, since we are passing it to this async error handler, it will be called immediately as soon as this async error handler function is called and we are calling this async error handler function here okay so it is not going to work as we expect it so the solution here would be to return a function from within this async error handler function and then assign it to this create movie so what we can do here is let me go ahead and let me return an anonymous function from here okay and we want to assign this anonymous function to this create movie. And inside that anonymous function, we will call this function. So now to this create movie, we are assigning this anonymous function. And now this anonymous function will be called by the express app. So whenever a new post request will be made in order to create a new movie object, this anonymous function, which we are assigning here to this create movie, that will be called and it will be called by express. So when the express is going to call this function, it is also going to pass the request, the response and the next function to it. And in this way, we will have access to this request, response and next function also. And now everything will work as expected. So let's go ahead and let's quickly test it. Let's save the changes. Let's go to Postman. And here, let's open a new tab. Here, we want to make a post request and we want to make post request to this URL 
and since we are making a post request we also need to specify some body so here i'm going to specify the raw data and it is going to be json move this a bit down and here let me go ahead and let me paste a movie object okay now here if we go to our movie model so here we have our model and if we go to this movie model there you will notice that this name it is a required field so if i go back to postman and if i don't specify a name here that means a validation error will occur and that validation error should also get handled by the global error handling middleware let's actually see that so when we make a request here you see here we have the error message and the error message says movie validation failed name is a required field and you see status is 500 and here also you will see status as 500 internal server error so what has happened here is when we made a request to create a new movie object the request will reach to this create movie route handler function and in there we are passing the request body so request body is basically our movie object and in that movie object the name field is missing so when the model validation will happen mongoose will find that there is one required field missing so the mongoose will throw a validation error and when that validation error will happen you see we are passing this function to this async error handler so when that validation error will happen that means this function here which we are passing to this async error handler so this function is assigned to this func so when this func is called here since some error has occurred it is going to return a rejected promise right and we are handling that rejected promise using this catch method now what we are doing inside this catch method we are passing that error which has occurred to the global error handling middleware so here this error will be passed to the global error handling middleware let me go to errorcontroller.js and there this error variable it will receive that error object so here we are setting the status code now since this error is a validation error and it has been raised by mongoose there will be no status code set on it so this error dot status code it will be empty in that case this default status code will be assigned to this status code property and that's why here you can see the status is 500 internal server error so as i have mentioned earlier in our previous lectures not all the errors will have a status code set on it and that's why we are assigning some default value for the status code in such cases then from here we are sending the status code so currently the error dot status code is 500 and also some json response so in the json response we are setting the status to status code and that's why the status here is 500 which is the status code we have set and also the error message and that error message we are setting on the movie model so basically here name is a required field all right so here inside this create movie route handler function we have removed the try catch block and inside this function we are handling errors using global error handling middleware now let's go ahead and inside this utils folder let's go ahead and let's create a new file and i am going to call this file async error handler.js okay and inside this file i am going to move this function which we have just created so i'll cut it from here and let's put it here now here we don't need a name we can simply say module dot exports and we want to export this function let's save the changes let's go back to movies controller.js let's go ahead and let's import that function so let's create a variable let's again call it async error handler and let's use the require function and there let's specify the path of that file so from here we need to move one folder up in there we need to go to this utils folder and inside this utils folder we have async error handler function now we need to use this async error handler function okay so here we are using that function all right now we are going to do the same thing for other functions as well so here also 
I am going to pass this function to this async error handler function and I will remove the try block and also the catch block. Let's do the same thing here as well. Let's remove try block from here. Let's also remove catch block from here. And let's pass this function to this async error handler function. Then let's scroll down. So let's do the same thing here. Let's pass this function to async error handler. And let's remove try catch from here. Same thing here. And let's remove try catch block. And finally, let's do the same thing for this last function as well. Let's remove catch block from here. And let's also remove try block from here. Let's save the changes. And one more thing which we need to do here is we need to pass next for each of these route handler functions. So these route handler functions, they will also have access to this next function. So we need to do that. Okay, so we are passing this next function to these functions because when we are calling this async error handler, basically we are going to return this function. So this function will be assigned to the variable. For example, in this case, get all movies. And there, for that function, we are also receiving the next as the parameter. And using this next only, we are going to call the global error handling middleware function. Okay, with this, let's save all our changes and let's test it one more time. So let's go to Postman and Let's make a request one more time. And you see, we are still getting the error. But if I get back the movie name, now with this name, we already have a movie in the database. So now if I make a request, now we should have another validation error. And it says name should only contain alphabets. Okay. Here we have a special character. If I remove this special character from here, and also if I go to the model, so here we have this movie model. Here, we are specifying this validator where we are saying that name should only contain alphabets. But this we don't need because I want the movie name to have spaces also. Okay. So now let me go back to database and now if I make a request. All right. So that movie object has been created because you see earlier it has a special character. I removed it. So now this name is different from that name. So that's why this movie object has been created. But if I try to create this movie object again, now we should have a validation error message. And it says that we have a duplicate key error for this name field. Now let's also test it with get API. So here, let me go ahead and let me make a request to movies resource. And here, if I specify some random ID value, and if I make a request, you see here still we are getting the validation error message. So basically, this value cannot be converted to object ID type. That's what the error message we are getting here. So these errors are being propagated and cached by the global error handling middleware. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.